it's your boy Shimigami X, aka Captain Captain X, here today to give you my review of Bleach Chapter 573 entitled I Am the Edge. Alright, but before we get into this chapter review, I would like to apologize for having this review out late. <sighs> Unforeseen circumstances yesterday just prevented me from pushing this review out. Sometimes life throws you curveballs and you just have to brace yourself and deal with it. No point complaining and whining because you just have to deal with it at the end of the day. But just put up with it and move forward. But nonetheless, that's not what this review is about. Let's get into this review right after that intro. <laughs> This week's chapter does a solid of reintroducing Kenpachi Zaraki back into the series. What you can clearly see is that he's had some development in terms of his character. He wears his convictions well um, and also you can see that his battle with Unahana has made him mature. As for, for example, prior to this battle he just literally ran into every single fight as a wild brute, swinging and slashing at everything. But whereas in this instance he seems somewhat more noble. When I say that it seems like he seems more proud to wear his name. The name Kenpachi is the name that was given to the strongest Shinigami, which is what he used to always call himself, but it turns out in fact that Zaraki Kenpachi didn't in fact even have a name. As you all know, Zaraki is a, a district, it is a section in the Rukong district, and the name Kenpachi is a title that he gave to himself from defeating the 8th uh, Kenpachi, which is originally the, which was the previous squad um, 11 captain, which is why he is the current captain squad 11. But, with all that being said, he wears his conviction as well and he's definitely matured as a character for the per per past year that we have not seen him in. Alright. <sighs> now let's move on to this new Star Knight. Firstly, I'd just like to say, how many people called it? I called it, probably you called it, Charles Anemiro called it, Lee Ace called it, Tekken 101 called it. It was just it was it was kind of obvious that you know that this uh Star Knight would end up being the real Star Knight V or you know that other, that other character with a little stupid knife was not the real Star Knight because he just seems so hella stupid like it's unlikely that Cooper's going to reintroduce the Star Knight for him to have him be killed that quickly knowing that the Star Knight are the elite of the Quincy's and the ones that are supposed to be the most threat to the Shinigami now a lot of people are going to want, want me to address this so I'm going to address this straight away is you know this uh, you know Guremi character the strongest of the Star Knight get the hell out of here no he's not <laughs> Of course he's not. You honestly think he's stronger than Hashworlds? No. Listen, it's obviously evident to see that the uh, Star Knights are obviously ranked by their letter. So you're going to tell me that Star Knight V is going to be stronger than Star Knight B? Get the hell out of here. Basically, the reason I think that he's only said that is because it helps with his powers against his opponent. If he says to his opponent that, yeah, you know, I'm probably the strongest Star Knight because of what my abilities are, they can be imagination, blah, 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 I can conjure up anything. Baron, it's just a way to get into the head of his opponent. That's just basically what it's for. Also, there's so many other reviews that have said this, but yeah, his powers are imagination and the imagination is limitless, but it has to be a limit to his powers. Otherwise, do you not think that he could have just ended the war straight away? How about when they first invaded, he could, Juha could just ask like, Grammy, end this. He'd be like, okay, I imagine that you're all dead. And they're all dead. It could have just been like that. So obviously, the abilities have his ability has the ability to be somewhat hacked, but there has to be a limit. There has to be a cap on there. Otherwise, it, this, the series would essentially be broken. So that's just my thoughts about that. Gremi is not the strongest of the Star Knight. Hell, no way in hell. One, his his letter V. The Star Knights are obviously ranked in terms of uh, you know what letter, what letter. The higher up the letter is in terms of the alphabet, well, the lower the letter is in terms of the alphabet, is, is how powerful they are. Obviously, Juha being A, Hashwards being B, we don't know who C is, etc., etc., of going on like that. So, for Star Knight V to be the strongest, get the hell out of here. Basically, what he's doing is playing a mind game. Because what his powers seem to be and how they seem to work is basically if he can get the opponent to be able to believe you know that his powers he's able to conjure up anything then that's what's going to happen like for example in the previous chapter where Yachiru's arms turned to um, basically cookie dough and broke under the weight of her sword it just the only reason i believe that was actually possible was simply because he made her for a split second believe that yeah this is how his powers work all right and as we see um this kid Guremi has a more serious tone at the end of the chapter where Zaraki Kenpachi cuts him because at first he seems somewhat cocky, kind of like what Kang Du was when he's like, oh, you know what, I can just imagine my body is harder than steel, and then, you know, you won't be able to cut me. But Ken Paji obviously interrupts him there, so like, you know what, if you're going to say that your body's harder than steel, then, you know, just flat out say it, because then, then I'll just cut you like I would cut steel. There's nothing that you can't, that you can imagine or conjure up that I can't cut through, because I am Ken Paji. 
well, the Ken Pachi, and I like that because what that illustrates it illustrates some a little bit of development for Zaraki's character simply by you know his the way he wears his name before he used to just say it and just be a proud brute swinging around slashing at things now not only that he does know the name of Ishikai I don't believe I don't even believe he's mastered it to be honest with you um, because while it's been a year in our time it's only been a few days um, you know in the Bleach universe so I highly doubt that he's even mastered Ishikai let alone people coming up with their theories about Bankai I highly 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 doubt he has a Bankai and if he does just like Rukia he sure as hell hasn't mastered it so for those people you know who want to be like oh yeah he definitely has a Bankai this Kenpachi we're talking about reserve your judgement take it easy sit back and watch because you could you probably just end up making a fool out of yourself you're gonna end up being wrong about it so reserve your judgement be easy chit, sit back relax and we'll wait and see but I highly doubt it so um, as for what Ishikai ability could be, let's not go into that because we have absolutely nothing to go on and yeah, I don't jump out on a limb on things like that if there's obviously nothing to go on. I make educated guesses, not random theories. That's just how I work, that's how my channel works, that's how I do my reviews. Nonetheless, this week's chapter was, um, it was undoubtedly, undoubtedly a short chapter, but it was a very good one in the sense that Kenpachi Zaraki seems to have matured as a character um, and a perfect example of that is how he approached the situation with Isane, where uh, Isane was just basically asking, you know, where's um, Captain Unahana? Because obviously she knows that they had their battle in Mugen. She, he's there, she's not, and he just quite bluntly says, like, you know what? She's dead. I killed her. And if you hate me for that, you know, you're always welcome to come and kill me. So even the way he wore that was, you know, the same as what the old Kenpachi would say. But the way he said it, and the way the mood was set in the chapter, it showed that Kenpachi Zaraki has matured as a character to some extent. His, because he had to kill the only woman he's ever respected, or the only person he's ever truly respected, in order to become, or not, in order to gain the power that he has now, in order to get where he is now. So that has shown some level of development in terms of his character. We didn't get much story progression in this chapter because it seemed like a very, very small setup chapter for the oncoming battle that's about to happen. I do believe that this battle is going to be, um, you know, a somewhat good battle. And the only reason I say that is just simply because of what Starlight V's powers are. Because in Bleach, as we all know, it's not always about the amount of Reiatsu or spiritual pressure that you have, although that does play a big contributing factor into it. Sometimes, what the person's ability, what the um, villain or hero's abilities are, in this case, I'm Star Knight V, have a really big factor about how the battle takes place. Because he's able to conjure up anything and be able to, you know, more or less do whatever he wants, it will push Kenpachi Zaraki up in a corner to an extent. But then this is obviously Ken Pachi we're talking about. So nonetheless, for the rest of it, it's going to have to wait and see. Anyways, guys, this chapter review seems short simply because the chapter itself was short. So nonetheless, I hope you guys have enjoyed my chapter review. And it's your boy, Shimigami X, aka Captain Captain X. I'm signing out. And as always, my people, take care and peace.